Welcome to part three of my double bass build from Garbage series. If you haven't seen parts one and two, I highly recommend you watch those first before watching this. Everything will make more sense. But in a nutshell, I built this double bass out of all things that other people have thrown away. In parts one and two, I went through the process of creating molds and forming it and shaping it and designing it. Now parts three, I've got pretty much all of that stuff done and it's time to actually stick this thing together and make it play. And that's what I do now. And yes, it actually plays. This video is sponsored by Golier Music. If you are a double bass player, you probably know who Golier Music is. And if you are a double bass player and you do not know who Golier Music is, you should pause this video right now and go figure out who Golier Music is. So I'm going to talk more about them later in the video. Well, let's get into the build. When we left off in part two, I was cleaning up this edge seam of where my two pieces of wood were together. And then of course, there's a ton of other sanding to do on the whole body. I had pretty much all of my bracing fit in and I've got some little details I needed to do like cutting out the spot where the neck is gonna slide in, et cetera, et cetera. And then there's gonna be a pole that's gonna go straight up and down right here yeah. underneath where the bridge goes. So when the strings are pushing down on it, it won't crush it because the top is gonna be thin like this too. Yeah. And then the top will have a support there. Go up like this. Here, put hold, hold this string. Yeah. Um, now hold it like this and like this. Okay. So this is the headstock of the base, and then this is the tail of the base. And then there's going to be a bridge that goes right here, right? So go ahead, push down, hold strong, don't we? Yep. So listen. Feel that tension? Yeah. But now if it's not that's strong, just, that's that's going to want to make it curl up. Right, exactly. Your two make hands are going to want to go like that together. Make it all mangle and bend yep. and stuff. And so that's collapse. that's the trick. So it's going to it's going to go like that. And yes. collapse up on it wants each to, other. It wants to close, yep. Same with every guitar that you make. Those strings are pulling and they want to pull the head and the tail together, so you have to make it strong enough between the neck, the body, and in the body. Yeah, but still make it hollow so it vibrates. It's tricky. I don't know if it's going to work or not. What do you think? You think I can make it? Think it's going to work? If you think about it for a while, maybe. I put this little piece of leftover door from the sides that I made in a spot around where I know my sound post is going to go. And you're going to see that later, but there's a post that runs up and down between the top and back that puts a lot of pressure on the instrument. And so I wanted to give it a little extra bracing there. Now I'm just about ready to glue the top on and I'm concerned about being able to get glue in and get it all clamped together so I'm doing a dry run first and then I decided that I couldn't. <laughs> so I went around a little bit at a time and there's enough flex in the woods where I could do a spot, clamp it, brush some glue in, do another spot, clamp it, and um, it worked okay. I wasn't sure if this was going to work or not but it did. An hour or two later, I took the clamps off and everything seemed to work. There was one spot that I needed to fix. I started trying to sort of chisel it off, but it was still a little too tacky, so I waited till the next day and then it, the excess chiseled off uh, a lot better and I was able to just sort of sand and clean up those edges. I also cut some thin strips of my laser cut kerfing to make a band, an edge band around the instrument. Um, this was a plan from the beginning. Uh, it's not common, but there's really <laughs> not much common about what I'm doing, I guess. I thought that would improve the look a little bit. Let me cover up my, my ugly seams. The goal of this build is to make as much of this base out of reclaimed materials and other people's garbage as I could, but there were still some things that I was just not going to be able to manufacture for this gig, so that's why I went to Goldie Music. Like, you know, machining these tuners, I mean, that's just above and beyond my capabilities right now and my, my time frame. Uh, this is the end pin that the base stands on. Uh, I could have made something, but I thought I would just buy one because I have enough to make. Um, this bridge I actually bought from Goldier about... Whew, probably five or six years ago, the last time I did work on my aluminum base, but I was able to continue to use the bridge that was on there, so I never used it. And I have this nut that I had bought there from when I made my first electric base, like 18 years ago, that I ended up never using. Um, what else? So then, those I already had. Um, I also already have this really cool sound post setter. This is a tool I bought from them 
which you'll get to see used later. And uh, this is a spruce sound post. It's just basically a dowel, but it's a nice aged spruce. And I just bought that so I could have one piece of wood in this instrument be right. <laughs> I was gonna make this bridge and then I decided since I had this one already on hand, I would just use it. And I wanted to make my own tailpiece. I happen to have this cruddy one on hand that I've already gone and, and CNC'd my own version. If you don't know this about me, um, I take endorsements very seriously on my YouTube channel. I only endorse companies and products that like I personally work with, use, and believe in. Not those companies that we guiltily use, but the ones that I really believe in. And this is a really super exciting one for me because when I was playing the electric bass and I was trying to make a living as a musician back in the 90s, uh, I had this idea in my head that I wanted to switch to playing the double bass to separate myself from the pack. I had never played a double bass, I had never even held a double bass, and so I decided to start by making my own electric upright bass. There was just not a lot of information out there. The internet was young, and I found this guy named Bob Golier. I ended up ordering some parts from him. I spoke with him on the phone about it. This guy was super knowledgeable, super helpful, and he got me everything I needed to build my first electric upright bass. And since then, now I had a career of about 12 or 15 years of playing the double bass for a living. Every string I've ever bought, every bass I've ever restored, every part I've ever needed, I have bought from Golier Music. In those years, Mark Golier started co-running the business with his father, now his father is retired from it, and it is still today just as good as it always was. Um, so when I decided to embark on this project of building my own double bass, of course Goldier Music was the first place I thought to call. These guys are the best. Um, not only do they have everything you need if you're a double bass player, and they've, they've road tested it all. They've collected data, they've used it. They have, if you don't know what pickup you need, there's just reams and reams of information about the differences between the pickups, the differences between the strings. They have it all in stock in their warehouse in New Jersey. It ships out that day. And when they ship this stuff, they even have pages and pages of information to help you along with it. This is not the kind of stuff you get you know, from normal stores. So here's about how to fit a new upright base bridge. Every, it's, it's just an incredible company. It's, uh, it's a family owned business. It's everything that I would hope for my business to be and everything I would hope for the way shopping should be. So if you're a double bass player, you're interested in building them, buying them, upgrading them, whatever, goldiermusic.com is like really the only place to go. Okay, while I was talking there, you saw me CNC carve out a fingerboard, and now it is time to glue it onto the neck. So now the reason I'm using hide glue is because it's common in double basses. I mean, they take a lot of work and they're worth a lot of money, so they last a long time. Violins and cellos and all these instruments, some of them are hundreds of years old. I myself have one that's almost 100 years old. And, and my other two, my youngest one was built in 56. So what happens over the years is you end up needing to remove parts to do work on them because parts break. Um, with the hide glue, I can spread it on here and I can glue this on. I've already done a dry fit with some clamps. Um, it will dry relatively quickly. And in 50 years, if I need to take this fingerboard off, I can heat up a, a trowel or some kind of you know metal wedge or something. And I can wedge this and heat that glue up and, and pry it off and work on this instrument and re-glue it. Uh, it's, it's the summer here right now, so it's relatively warm in the shop, so that gives me a little bit more drying time. If it were really cold in here, it would be very, very difficult to get this to adhere because it does, as soon as it cools down, it starts to work. But uh, let's see if we can make some magic happen. I use a double boiler to heat it up, and steam heat is really a great way to keep it uh, workable and to get it apart, too. Now that the fingerboard and neck are joined, I can do my final fitting and sanding. And I also wanted to put a coat of finish on the neck, but not the fingerboard. So I tape the fingerboard off and I use this uh, Total Boat Halcyon. Uh, it's an amber tinted water-based varnish and it is like my new favorite varnish. It goes on well with a brush or a sprayer or whatever. You can see uh, there's the finished neck ready to go on the base. With the neck dry fitted, I can trim out some ugly spots. And then I also wanted to start roughing in my base bridge. I want the feet of it to fit the contour of the top. And the easiest way to do that is use the contour of the top as a sanding block. I sand it to 220 and wipe the whole base down with alcohol to prep it for finish. And then I use that same Total Boat Halcyon finish and I just brushed it on. Um, it really works pretty well with a brush. I'm looking forward to trying with sp it sprayed as well, but um, I don't like to spray. It's just I feel like I have to shut the shop down and it, it's a lot of cleanup. So any kind of halfway decent finish I can get on with a brush, I am a fan of. 
on the fingerboard and the tailpiece and all the stuff that was made out of reclaimed kumaru decking like this little block that helps protect the body where the tailpiece gets held on i just put a little bit of mineral oil and beeswax on it A lot of modern bases use this sort of aircraft grade cable to tie the tailpiece onto the end pin. I found some that had this cool green lining on it, so I thought that was a nice little pop of color. This is actually one of the trickier parts of this build. Not that they, any other part has been easy, I guess, but there's a simple post that goes from the bottom to the top of this piece of wood, just like this that keeps this from collapsing under the pressure of the strings pushing down on the bridge. It's called the sound post. I only get one shot of this. If I cut it too short, I screw it up. If I cut it too long, it pokes up. So I'm gonna use a drumstick to get my measurement and kind of practice a little bit putting this thing in here. It's sort of tricky. So I glued a plate into the top of this of holocore door. And then there's also a piece of bracing here. So the depth isn't just the same as the exterior depth. Plus we have an arch, everything gets weird. So what I'm doing is I'm putting my tape measure on the, the back brace that I have in there and measuring to the bottom of my F-hole and it's about eight and an eighth inches. And then my plate of holocore door is also an eighth of an inch. So I can subtract that from it and I get eight inches, but it does curve up just a little bit more from here. So I'm gonna go eight inches heavy and I think I'll be okay. This is a cool tool that many of you have probably not seen. It is a, a sound post setter, and they make them in smaller sizes for the violin and for the cello. Uh, this one is obviously for the bass. So the idea is, as this very sharp end, it's as sharp as a chisel, that you stab the sound post with, which is going to be difficult with this because it's not spruce. It's this very dense uh, wood. I don't know what it is. Hickory. Um, so you stab it with this, and then when you've got this held, you can lower it into the F-hole and sort of get it into place, just sort of wedge it a little bit, and then you can flip it around and you can use this disc to nudge and push it straight in where it needs to be on both the top and bottom. And uh, it's a real skill. I've only done it a couple times, so <laughs> let's see what goes wrong. This is my practice with a drumstick. Damn it. Fell. The rest of ice pick saves the day again. A couple more practices and I felt like I was ready to do it for real. I'm gonna start putting strings on it now even before I have the sound post in because I wanna start slowly getting it under tension and then put the sound post in after there's just a little bit of tension on the top. My bridge is a mile high and my nut's not carved in so the strings are not gonna be anywhere near playable but it's gonna start putting pressure in all the places the pressure's gonna be and I can make sure I measure it all up and get stuff in the right spot. Mark sent me this uh, string winder along with my stuff, and uh, it helps a little bit. It took some getting used to. Now, I learned that that dressed ice pick worked really well, and so I used that as one half of my sound post setter, and that way I was able to two-hand it, which worked way better than sort of wedging it in with just the one tool and then having to flip it over. So I felt like I had a lot more control this way, and it went in really pretty easily like that. I've been playing this for a few days now on this setup, and uh, I know I could do better. I think I need to reset the sound post, uh, push it a little bit closer to the bridge. Um, it's all a learning experience for me. Mark also sent me this amazing little tool for just helping to lay out your bridge and your nut. Um, oh my god, it made life so much easier for setting up string spacing and, and making cuts. So you can see I have to bring the bridge down. Um, I started just very roughly setting it up. I'm very slowly bringing this up to tension, and this has got to be one of the most stressful things I've ever done, because I have no idea if it's just going to collapse or if something's going to fly up. There's a lot of pressure in this, and everything's settling, so I'll tune it up and then it'll shrink, you know, just going very slow. Still got a long way to go on the setup. I'm almost up to pitch now. My bridge is still way too high, so I'm going to have to cut it a lot lower than bridges usually are. I don't think it's that my neck angle is off as much as I think my string scale is a little bit shorter than uh, I had expected it to be, um, but I, 
I'm still within the, a range that seems to be like it's going to work okay. I put a little bit more effort into shaping the bridge now, but it still needs to come off and get some final shaping and, and sanding. I wanted to get the, the base up under tension for a few days and sort of experiment with it before I got too carried away with the setup. I carved the nut in a little bit too, but that still needs a little bit of work. Quick little intermission. If you like this sort of thing, I'd recommend you go check out my channel some more. You can see this is a double bass that I made out of a snow ski. <laughs> this is a, a bass guitar I made out of a water ski. Here's a guitar I made out of aluminum. There's my, my skateboard slide guitar. What else we got over here? We got, oh, this is my, um, my detachable guitar that comes apart and makes other instruments. That's made out of a hog. I got a ton of videos about making instruments out of garbage all over this channel. And uh, <laughs> these are just the ones that are still hanging around the shop. So go check out my other videos. You might find something you like. I'm going to try and take it off the bench and pluck it for the first time. I think it's almost in tune. I have my tuner on it. I have my action set up pretty good. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to do it. I'm not going to stand here and procrastinate. <laughs> It wasn't locked. <laughs> it's it's alive. It's alive. That was super exciting that it worked, uh, so I went back in and, and tweaked the setup a little bit more, and like I just said, it's it still needs some more work, but I got it even more playable, and uh, I'm pretty happy about it. it works <laughs> hey I played this bass a little bit in these videos to show that it works but if you really want to hear it go check out my other YouTube channel new perspectives music on that channel I'm doing a shootout where I'm playing this bass my aluminum bass a 1956 K plywood bass and my 1920s fully carved check upright bass under the same microphone in the same situation so we can kind of really give a listen to them and see if garbage can hang with those other instruments so go check that out right now I'm just playing through the camera mic you know Hey, thanks for watching. I hope you watched all the videos in the series because this will all work better if you did that. And um, I hope that you learned something and at the very least were inspired to try to do things that other people might say you can't do because you probably can. The main things I would do differently are in design. I would change the shape of the instrument a little bit. Um, and in construction, there's a couple things I might do differently. Uh, maybe the bracing I might attack a little bit differently. and. Um, probably just be better at everything that I did in this one because with experience comes quality. Uh, I'm super pleased that this thing works as well as it does and I can't wait to kind of beat it around for a little while and see what happens to it over time. Thank you again very much for watching and I want to thank my sponsors. Uh, this video was sponsored by Golia Music. Go there right now. Uh, it's, it's, it's not even about the stuff that's available and the prices, it's about the knowledge that's there. Um, you, you can't top it. So thank you very, very much to Mark over at GoldierMusic.com for supporting me on this project. Um, it's been a blast and he's been super cool to work with. And I also want to thank my other two sponsors, Maker Made CNC, who sponsored part one, and Arbor Tech, who sponsored part two. 
I literally could not have made this basically lifelong dream of mine come true if it weren't for these companies and these people and their support. So thank you from the bottom of my heart. Thank you all for watching and um, be good.